My name is Hannah. I'm 20. I was a week away from the end of my first semester of college, but I was about to drop out. But then I traded my body to science, and they made me into a super genius. Before I tell you all about my brain implant, go ahead and like and subscribe for more hidden wisdom stories. So where was I? My memory's not so good. Never was. I used to sit through dozens of parent-teacher conferences. But those bozo teachers had it all wrong. It's not that I didn't care. I just couldn't concentrate. On tests, I get distracted and turn the multiple choice numbers into Pac-Man figures. But when I met Dwight, he really motivated me to work harder. He was super smart. And everybody used to call us the odd couple. Because he was always getting praised by the same teachers that scolded me. Dwight thought that I just didn't have the right motivation. He also told me that he was worried what I was going to do after graduation. He said that he wanted to see me in his future, but he wasn't sure what that would be. I never really thought about my future too much, but I got the feeling Dwight wanted a college girl or something. I tried twice as hard at school, and the teachers appreciated my effort. Slowly but surely, my grades started to raise. I learned new study habits and the best ways to take notes. And it paid off. The day I got accepted to college, I felt like a million bucks. But that fall, I felt like crap. College was so different. Professors just piled the books on, and if you said anything about it being hard or challenging, they'd just look at you like that was the point. And it was, I guess. But I was a fish out of water here. In class, everybody seemed to be having a good time. But I was struggling to keep up. I was so desperate when I found this flyer. It was a simple green paper, and it guaranteed improved grades for a low cost. I figured it couldn't hurt to see what it was about, so I called. I spoke to some guy named Clive, who said he was a doctor, but sounded like an old drill sergeant who lost his voice screaming over mortar fire. Everything was a command or a curse, but he promised me great grades. I told him I wasn't a cheater, and he started swearing at me like I was accusing him of something. He seemed legit, so I showed up to the address he gave me. I was expecting a tutoring center with graduate students looking to make a few bucks. But it looked more like one of those dock-in-a-box places for emergency care. Clive was there with a few other older nerds. They introduced themselves as advanced researchers of cyborg theory and development. Clive said they were currently funded privately and they were looking for guinea pigs. In a nutshell, Clive told me that with an eye-implanted camera, I could develop a photographic memory. It would involve surgically implanting an electrode, a thin wire, and conditioning the visual cortex. And then the camera worked like a contact lens that I could put in and take out. While I was wearing it, my brain, in theory, would function like storage on your hard drive. And everything I could perceive could be stored and easily brought to mind for reviewing. Tests would no longer be a problem. I could just instantly go back to the lecture or read whatever book again since I would have it stored in my head. I asked if anybody had ever done it before, and he said that he had, personally. He added that my implant would be a new prototype. But I didn't like the idea of being a guinea pig, so I declined. Dwight was a few towns over at the big state college, and I had to study by myself. We were having what you'd call a long-distance relationship, and I think he was handling it better than me. I thought for sure Dwight was going to meet some brainiac girl and leave me in the dust. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I was about to flunk out of my first semester of college and make myself look like an amateur. I surprised him one weekend for a visit. We had a great time, but he kept getting calls from all these girls. Apparently, they were in his study group. I wanted to tell him that I wished he would study with me, 
but I didn't want him to know that I was having such a hard time. Back at my school, final exams were coming up, and I was studying like crazy, but still, I felt so behind. I started to wonder about those brain implants. I went back to that mysterious address and talked to Clive. I asked more questions, and he said my grades would improve immediately. I spontaneously agreed. When I woke up from the surgery, they told me that the procedure was a success, and I could begin wearing the contact lens. Immediately, my life changed. When I wore the contact, I started remembering everything with 100% clarity and accuracy. I wasn't more focused, I just absorbed everything, even if it was in my peripheral. I reviewed all my notes and I aced all my tests. It was so easy. And I saved myself from flunking out. The next semester, I doubled my courses and pulled all A's. I was getting invited to join academic sororities and being put on the dean's list. I didn't feel intimidated in classes. In fact, I remembered a couple of the snobs from before I had a super brain, and I made them look like chumps now. I checked in with Clive so he could track my success. He'd talk to me like a shrink and ask me a zillion questions. The best thing about my photographic memory was Dwight. He was beside himself at my success, and I told him that I was just a late bloomer. I didn't want him to know that I had done an experimental surgery or was using an implant to get super smart. The next time I visited Dwight, I had this idea to meet all his fancy study friends. I wanted to show these girls up intellectually. I wore the contact lens because I wanted to remember Dwight's face when I schooled those amateurs. But his face wasn't what I expected. I thought he would gaze at me adoringly, but he didn't look at me that way at all. He almost looked disgusted. Later that weekend, he told me that I had changed. I said that he was jealous, and it turned into this big fight. I tried to forget about the whole thing, but I couldn't get Dwight's face out of my mind. The way he was looking at me with disgust was seared into my memory. I put my attention to school, but that took little effort. Clive wouldn't stop calling me with questions, and I was starting to get curious about that article he was writing about me. When I had a moment alone, I read through all his notes and everything he'd written so far. He concluded that my confidence had swollen to the point of arrogance and that I didn't have the emotional maturity to handle the genius I had been gifted. At first, I shrugged it off as jealousy. But then, suddenly, I started getting this insane migraine. And I started to lose vision. I crawled from my phone and used voice command to call Dwight. I was scared, and he was confused. But I told him the whole story. He was disappointed, but mostly he was worried. He drove all the way to get me and bring me to the hospital. My vision was coming and going, and when I got to the hospital, I begged them to remove the implants. After the surgery, I was able to see again completely, but I didn't have a photographic memory anymore. I told Dwight how much I appreciated him and apologized about being such a jerk face to his friends. He asked me why I put the implant in to begin with. I told him I was afraid of losing him to somebody smarter. Dwight told me that what he loved about me was my heart. It was funny because when I got the brain I wanted, I seemed to lose my heart. I realized that when you don't put in the work before getting a reward, it can make you spoiled. Even if I have to work harder, I decided to stay in school. I learned that pride comes before the fall. Being humbled can sting, but it'll open up a lot more doors than arrogance ever will. Have you ever caught yourself being arrogant? Tell us about it in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more hidden wisdom stories. Remember, when you share our stories, you're sharing wisdom.